Are you working on Linux modules for Azure IT Edge? And are you interested in running them on the Windows host? You might have heard about eFlow. It was in preview. Harry and Christopher are here to announce that it's now available in GA and to show us what the new features are and what to expect. This is today on the IoT Show. Hi, everyone. This is the IoT Show. Thanks for watching. I'm Olivier, your host. Today, we'll talk about IoT Edge modules for Linux on Windows. And for that, we have Terry and Christopher. Terry, nice to have you on the show again. Before we start into to the topic and before we give Christopher a chance to introduce himself as well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What are you doing at Microsoft? Yeah, Olivier, I'm a senior program manager in the Edge OS team. Um, over the last couple of years, I've been working on enabling uh, Azure IoT Edge uh, on Windows. We started with uh, uh, Azure IoT Edge for Windows, and we're really moving over to uh, enabling Linux modules on Windows with uh, Azure IoT Edge for Linux on Windows. And I've got an exciting announcement coming up. Definitely. Uh, looking forward to you sharing that with everyone here. Christopher, what about you? Hey, Olivier, it's great to be with you here today. Uh, my name is Christopher. Uh, I'm also a PM on the eFlow team. Uh, I've been uh, focusing uh, the past few months on our CBL Mariner operating system, which is one of the core technology that eFlow was built on, and recently uh, some of the AIML uh, acceleration capabilities, which we'll get to touch upon later today. That's great. It's great to have folks from the Edge OS team because at the end of the day, it's kind of a new world at Microsoft, right? Working on Linux, Linux modules, enabling them on Windows platform. Um, so Terry, tell us a bit more about eFlow and you have this announcement, right? This thing is now available, right? Yeah, exactly. We, you know, we, we, we spoke a couple months back about uh, Azure IoT Edge for Linux on Windows entering public preview. And we've been, that's been going very well. We've got a, a lot of customers interested in the platform. And I'm here today to announce the general availability for production use of Azure IoT Edge for Linux on Windows. The, the purpose of this uh, offering is to enable um, you know, cloud native workloads uh, that are typically built for Linux today uh, to run on uh, on Windows in kind of a hybrid operating system uh, type of solution where we can have interoperability uh, with the Windows. You can take advantage of your Windows investments uh, as well as bringing in new things from the Lin Linux side uh, to do some pretty amazing things. Yeah, no, I like to call it the best of both worlds, right? Where yeah, you don't exactly have to right. compromise. You can definitely use... Uh, a platform that you're you're familiar with that you have the tools to manage, which is Windows, uh, and security updates are pushed to the machine and so on. And then um, the Linux modules, because there is a community out there and developments are done for Linux machines in various areas that are interesting for us uh, in the realm of IoT that uh, that uh, actually are brought in and can seamlessly run on on Windows, as we'll see during a demo later on. But uh, before we give it to give time to Christopher for him to run this demo, so what are the few things Terry that are really new, in, like between Preview and GA uh, in in eFlow? Yeah, one of the things we've been working on uh, since the public preview has been uh, enabling GPU support for the platform, which is Chris is gonna show us a little bit about that in a few minutes. Uh, we've enabled uh, TPM support for uh, device provisioning service. So we can actually uh, provision this device uh, with uh, using DPS. Um, mm -hmm. And just working with the ecosystem uh, around enabling and making sure that modules out there that are available in the marketplace are uh, functional and, and, and work just you know out of the box with uh, Azure eFlow. Um, we've enabled a lot around a servicing uh, model. You mentioned that just a second ago, where you know the management and servicing stack for eFlow is all done through Windows. Uh, there's no need for an enterprise to uh, set up a different, uh, a different um, management control plane for Linux, anything like that, where you've got to manage your uh, 
uh, your updates for Linux separately. We actually do it through Windows Update. So it's seamless uh, and plugs right into existing uh, Windows um, uh, management stack for managing those updates just the way you would for any of your workstations that you've got running Windows. So um, I'm, it I'm sure lots of our... I'm sure lots of our IT folks out there just like uh, just like listening and they say, "Oh, that's interesting." So yeah. I hope they're gonna look into that. Uh, and can you tell us, since um, Eflo has been in preview, what kind of scenarios are seeing customers uh, looking into? What are the key ones? What are the most notable ones that you've seen there? So we've seen a lot of things happening in the IIoT space uh, for like factories and uh, and so forth, monitoring machinery. Uh, for predictive maintenance. Um, we're starting to see some uh, things in the AIML space for, uh, we've seen some things around uh, COVID uh, uh, detection of uh, deployed uh, uh, protective you know, equipment and things like that mm -hmm. in hospitals. Um, seen a lot of things in you know, like retail or signage around um, detection presence to change the behavior of something based on uh, presence of uh, a person or even item identification, let's say in the healthcare space where you've got uh, healthcare machinery, you know, or healthcare imaging devices, you know, and using using the, the algorithms available through the Linux modules to identify anomalies in those images. Got it. So that's that's pretty much um, you know an interesting set and very broad set of usage. Very here. broad. Um, let's let's chat about um, GPU and and the way so the way eFlow now can interact with hardware a bit better um, now we are in GA and so Christopher um, let's look at the demo you have here. I'm really uh, you know eager to understand. Uh, the how you guys have been implementing and how it looks like that interaction with the hardware, uh, which is never a very easy thing when you think about Docker containers, um, you know, that are designed for a specific OS, hosted on another OS, like that. that's tons of problems that are coming in, right? Sure thing, Olivier. Uh, let's first start at the top here. So like uh, Terry mentioned, uh, eFlow is a curated Linux VM that allows customers to deploy uh, Linux workloads on Windows. And one of the reasons you may want to do this is to run AIML workloads, which are overwhelmingly Linux-based, on your existing Windows IoT deployments, on your existing hardware, without having to procure and maintain uh, separate uh, Linux machines. And uh, one uh, AIML workload that we are interested in in particular is called Vision on Edge. Mm -hmm. uh, Vig Vision on Edge is an uh, open uh, source sample that some of our colleagues have put together. And it's really intended to be this uh, starting point uh, for customers to go from prototype uh, to production. And we are really excited to be able to bring Vision on Edge um, and support it on the vast user base of Windows through eFlow. So uh, we are going to uh, show that today, and um, we're going to touch upon GPU access as part of that. So um, Vision on Edge um, is deployed as Azure IoT Edge modules, mm -hmm. and previous IoT show videos have walked through the process of deployment of uh, Vision on Edge. For, for us here, uh, you know, we, uh, um, an eFlow, um, we basically have IoT Edge built in. So the process is essentially the same as we've uh, seen previously. So instead of just going through that today, I'm just going to uh, uh, demonstrate to you that the Vision on Edge modules are indeed running on eFlow. Okay. And there are two ways to do that. So I'll jump right in here. Uh, the first one is just simply through the, uh, the uh, Azure portal. So what you see here now, I'm in my IoT hub on a particular IoT Edge uh, uh, device that is associated with my eFlow deployment. And I can just simply check here and I can see the list of IoT Edge modules 
uh, that consists of the Vision on Edge application. And these are all uh, deployed and running. So this is uh, pretty uh, straightforward. Yeah, so Next. as a matter of fact, you did deploy Vision on Edge. As you were mentioning, Mahesh joined me on the IoT show recently to show that project. So there's, there was actually no changes on their side on the Vision on Edge um, projects to adapt to eFlow, right? It was more the other way around where you make eFlow actually um, allowing to run Vision on Edge modules directly on the Windows box, which was not um, you know, trivial before, would have required tons of changes on the, on the solution side of things, which now no longer the case. So you basically are making it possible in the case of Vision on Edge, but I guess in the case of other solutions that have been designed around Linux or with Linux as a target. That's exactly right, Olivier. Um, so to hit on that point, right, how we tried to make this process uh, easy for Windows customers, I'm going to move on to the second uh, method here, which is via the WAC extension. Okay, what so, is WAC? So WAC, so again, with uh, eFlow, we aspire to make the eFlow management process familiar to people who are uh, used to Windows. Okay. And one uh, commonly used tool in the space is Windows Admin Center. And we have our uh, Azure IoT Edge uh, eFlow extension, which gives you some basic information about the eFlow VM. And if I scroll down here again, I can see the Vision on Edge modules up and running on my device. So it's another just quick check here to see that. Okay, so, love it. So basically you're an admin, you manage all your devices with WAC, uh, and uh, now you just are able to do the same with eFlow. And in that case, uh, you can monitor and manage the deployment of your Azure IT modules as well for that solution, love it. All right, that's exactly right, Olivia. We deployed using the standard Vision on Edge process, and we can confirm that uh, the uh, modules are running uh, as intended. Now I'm going okay. to move on to the inferencing itself. So here I am in the Vision on Edge application, and I'm just going to go ahead and deploy uh, one of the pre-built uh, scenarios. And what you will see here is inferencing uh, happening uh, live on our eFlow machine. And we can see that's the case uh, because uh, the IP address here matches the IP address that we saw earlier in the WAC extension. So, uh, and, so uh, to be concrete here, Christopher, so the video we're seeing is, is a pre-recorded video, right? So it's not a real camera. However, the modules are running on an actual machine that you have at your place right now? That's exactly right. So this is a simulated uh, video feed that is representing a, a you know, warehouse environment. But this is running on eFlow mm -hmm. uh, on a uh, target machine that is uh, presently with me uh, right here. Got it. Now, uh, like you mentioned, you know, this is a simulated RTSP stream, uh, but uh, eFlow does support the capabilities to you know, uh, pull in from an IP camera or a USB camera. And we recently have published some samples uh, demonstrating uh, how customers uh, can do that. So next, Olivia, I'd like to mention the uh, GPU support. So as you can see here on the application, it says we are running on GPU. And uh, that is because we are running uh, uh, on uh, the inferencing on an NVIDIA uh, T4, which is on the machine that I have uh, with me here. Now, we recognize that uh, for a lot of AIML applications, especially computer vision type applications, uh, hardware access is, uh, is, is very important to get a performant uh, experience. So we are working to build out that GPU uh, capability uh, you know, directly in eFlow. Presently, uh, we support a certain uh, selection of uh, hardware. Uh, however, uh, at the present time, customers will need to be on a Windows Insider build 
for the uh, GPU uh, uh, pass-through uh, capabilities to be uh, fully enabled end-to-end -end, uh, until that is uh, available uh, more widely in Windows later this year. Okay. That, from that eFlow, from eFlow perspective, uh, currently uh, we support uh, the NVIDIA T4 as well as uh, some GeForce and Quadro cards. Additionally, we are working with Intel to bring uh, support for integrated GPUs uh, to eFlow uh, later this year. And we are looking for customer feedback to uh, uh, guide our direction to what uh, GPUs we uh, target uh, moving forward. Yeah, I was I was about to ask the fact that you picked the ones that you mentioned and listed here is not just because you felt these were the good ones. It's, it's <laughs> as Terry was mentioning, the know the work you guys have been doing, engaging with actual customers uh, with concrete you know needs and and uh, requirements uh, that these GPUs you mentioned and listed that are not supported are the most commonly used out there. But yes, feedback uh, certainly I guess welcome through all through directly through you guys. Um, is is something that uh, we're looking into. So, well, great, Christopher. Uh, like, do you have do you have more? I think more tabs in there, but uh, you know, I think you, you have a great demo here. Anything more? Yeah, no. This uh, kind of concludes the um, GPU portion here. I will again uh, highlight the fact that you know, uh, Vision on Edge is designed to take you from prototype to production, mm -hmm. and now that eFlow is GA. And uh, you know that uh, further supports customers' capability to uh, to bring these sorts of applications to production in a supported environment uh, with your existing uh, Windows deployments. Nice. Well, that's a nice wrap up here. I like it, Christopher. So, Terry, one last comment. You mentioned so GPU is one of the new hardware support. Uh, now we have TPM as well that is supported. That means that from, from eFlow itself and the modules running there, you can access TPM and uh, hardware root of trust uh, provided by a TPM in your modules, which is kind of important as well, um, right? So in terms of the roadmap, uh, you were saying, Christopher, that um, you need to have, if you want to use GPS support, a, a Windows Insider build. Uh, are we are looking at something in what kind of horizon for having all of that, uh, you know, in, in pure uh, pure GA and supported on uh, on main Windows. So I can take that, Olivier. Um, the the release that the GPU support will be available in will be uh, available this fall. Uh, okay. Chris is talking about uh, in setter builds, so that's where those the early bits are available. Uh, but uh, as you know, we, we typically have a fall and spring release uh, of, the, of the operating system. So it's targeted for the, uh, the fall release uh, to okay. take advantage of. So eFlow is just getting prepared for that availability, you know, once it is available mainstream. Um, I do want to call out the fact that the, the GPU support that, that Chris uh, mentioned uh, is a direct result of the conversations we've had and the engagement, the depth engagements we have had through our private preview and public preview customers and our depth engagements. So these are specific uh, GPU supports that, you know, that was uh, uh, in our discussions with those partners uh, throughout the uh, this release. On the TPM side, we're going to start out with at GA with the ability to uh, use the TPM for DPS, for device provisioning. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be enabling the uh, ability to read from the TPM uh, from modules. Uh, that will be something we service in uh, over the next over the coming months. It's just not something that's available at GA, but will be okay. shortly. Okay, that makes sense. Well, it's all coming, though, so that's great news yep. for everyone. Um, Terry, Christopher, thanks a lot for your time for this demo and for the updates on eFlow. Everyone, thanks for watching the IoT show. If you want to learn more about eFlow and where things are at, there's this link for you, which is https slash aka.ms slash IoT show slash eFlow. Thanks a lot, everyone, and uh, see you soon. Bye, guys.